Hi guys, uh, uh, welcome back to the uh, welcome back to our class on uh, measurements, electrical and electronic measurements. So here, uh, in the last session, we were discussing about the electrodynamo type meter. Uh, so uh, these are two images of the electrodynamo um, uh, type meter. So here, uh, in this uh, image, I think. Um, it is clearly visible there is a and there are uh, two images from two different angles of the same uh, meter so here you can see there are uh, two coils over here uh, so one is the coil from this uh, direction the, these two are basically the fixed coils so we have already seen the construction there is a fixed coil uh, which is this and then there is a moving coil right is very similar to our PMMC instrument where uh, we have two permanent magnets right so there are two permanent magnets in a PMMC instrument and then there is a uh, moving coil permanent magnet moving coil instrument so there's a moving coil which can move uh, in the direction of the uh, with the uh, interaction between the magnetic field of the permanent magnet and the uh, moving coil so depending upon the interaction of the permanent magnet and the moving coil it will move to different angles so which is uh, kept on a pivot which is free to move uh, and then we give a controlling force so we have already seen all these things uh, and the electrodynamometer type instrument is also very similar instead of the permanent magnets you have fixed coils uh, so these fixed coils are going to produce the magnetic field uh, which is very similar to the permanent magnets which produce the magnetic field um, so here you have the permanent magnets which produce the magnetic field here you have the fixed coils which produce the magnetic field which you can see from mm, this uh, image so here also you can see the same fixed coils the the big ones the uh, uh, the large ones uh, are the fixed coil and the and the inner uh, uh, coil which you can see over here this is your moving coil right this one which you can see over here is your moving coil so what happens is that this is a air cored uh, magnet air cored means uh, the core of this uh, fixed coil is uh, um, and there is no core so uh, the core is air and the moving coil also doesn't have any core it is also air so both both these fixed coils and moving coils are having uh, air cores and uh, this is the basic uh, setup and the moving coil is free to move it is uh, on a pivot arrangement where it is free to move and uh, it has the same function some very similar to the PMMC when the fixed coil is going to produce the magnetic field and the moving coil will also produce a magnetic field which will interact with each other and we, are, we had already seen the equations uh, also for this it will interact with each other and it will start moving the controlling uh, torque the deflection torque is by the magnetic attraction or repulsion and then you have the controlling torque that uh, comes as part of the um, spring that you are going to attach and the spring that is attached to the frame of the instrument will uh, provide the controlling torque for this uh, instrument and uh, so therefore that is the uh, as the main setup of the instrument now we'll also look at uh, how are the different ways in which this uh, this electrodynamometer type instrument can be uh, arranged in order to use for various applications so this uh, setup in which the current uh, both the currents are same uh, is mainly used for a voltmeter setup so this is a high resistance that you have over here you have a high resistance and uh, what we have is that the same current i is going to pass through uh, both these coils fixed coil and the uh, moving coil and you can get this you can connect this instrument in parallel to any of the components and you can find the volt voltage so this can be used as a uh, electrodynamometer type electro dynamo meter type voltmeter 
so that is one of the uh, use of this instrument so uh, each uh, the same uh, design the same construction uh, with the same construction uh, slight modifications in the arrangement uh, you can use this instrument as a voltmeter you can also use this instrument as a, a meter and you can also use this instrument as a watt meter so the same instrument can be used for all the three applications and this instrument can also be used for ac as well as dc measurements so that is the advantage of this type of instrument but the construction uh, the cost of this instrument is also high uh, in comparison to the permanent magnet uh, moving coil instrument or moving iron instrument uh, any of the other instruments this instrument the cost of construction uh, of this instrument is very much high so uh, but uh, the, it, the it, this is a very flexible instrument depending upon the arrangement you can use it for as a voltmeter or uh, a meter uh, or a watt meter so we we'll look at the different arrangements uh, that in which the meter can be used so uh, here we can see that uh, the moving coil is in a series with the current coil uh, or the uh, fixed coil this is the fixed coil this is the uh, this is the moving coil so uh, wh what we have already seen is that uh, for the moving coil the current uh, should be very low uh, because that is the instrument itself so you can also see that uh, here the moving coil the width the width of the uh, coil or the radius of the coil is uh, smaller in comparison to the uh, uh, width of the uh, fixed coils so because this is a rotating instrument you don't want uh, a very high weight means we don't want to increase the weight of the uh, moving coil because if the weight of the moving coil increases then the torque to weight ratio become decreases uh, which further affects the uh, performance of this instrument so we always want to reduce the uh, weight of the um, moving coil because it will also uh, contribute to the frictional losses uh, if the weight is high if the mass of the moving coil is high or the moving part is high so definitely we look for uh, very small uh, the the radius of the coil will be uh, the wires will be very small in comparison to the fixed coils uh, and, the, and therefore a very small current can only be passed through this moving coil so that's why uh, but in this setup there is no problem because uh, generally for a voltmeter we connect these uh, this instrument in parallel and we have a high resistance which uh, high resistance which block the uh, flow of current so therefore uh, it doesn't matter even if we connect it in parallel i mean when we connect it in parallel uh, the moving coil even if it is connected in series with the uh, fixed coils uh, still the current that flows through the moving coil will be very low uh, therefore uh, it is quite feasible to use it in this uh, design for voltmeters but when it comes to ammeters that is not the case uh, ammeters are generally connected in series with the load so when you connect uh, an ammeter in series with the load uh, the entire current should pass through the meter itself uh, here a very small current only passes through the meter in the voltmeter but in a meter the entire current will pass through the meter so in that case you can't you won't be able to connect this uh, moving coil in series with the fixed coil so in that uh, scenario we'll have to change the setup uh, for the uh, you'll have to change the design the basically the connections are only changed but the uh, construction remains the same but uh, we'll change the connections uh, slightly so you can we can look at how the connections will be made in that case so uh, for uh, electrodynamometer type ammeter uh, you will have let's say two fixed coils and then you'll have a uh, shunt resistance and the moving coil will be from a different uh, will be on a different branch and what we'll get is that uh, we'll have a moving coil over here with a very high resistance generally called as uh, swamping resistance swamping uh, resistance and 
this is known as your shunt resistance. So this will be the setup of your uh, instrument. Let's say these are the two ends of the uh, instruments, or the two ends of the and the knobs of the instruments. So you have two fixed coils. These two will be your fixed coils, and which provides the magnetic field similar to the permanent magnets. And this will be your moving coil, moving coil. Uh, the only difference is that the arrangement is the arrangement is slightly different and then you have a very high resistance over here which will restrict uh, the entry of the current into this uh, moving coil uh, and therefore uh, we can still uh, use it as a still use the instrument as a, um, a meter in, uh, in series with the load uh, and uh, the major um, advantage is that the most of the current will pass through this branch and only a very feeble current will pass through this uh, moving coil and still you can you will be able to give, get the uh, exact deflection uh, in the meter so this will be the arrangement for uh, electro dynamo meter type a meter right now uh, let us look at uh, what is the arrangement that we can have for uh, the same uh, with the same meter for uh, the electrodynamic meter type watt meter so the same instrument with the same construction with slight modifications can be used for a uh, watt meter electro dynamo meter type watt meter so here the uh, construction uh, is like, i mean the construction is the same you have two pressure coils Sorry, do you have two uh, current coils? Okay. We call it the current coils. So, or uh, it is the same uh, fixed coil, uh, which is known as the current coil. And then we have a pressure coil, uh, which is the moving coil. So the pressure coil will be the moving coil. And then uh, it, after the pressure coil you have a high resistance and it is connected in parallel with the load so there is a difference in this setup uh, that the load or the uh, whatever uh, you want to measure the uh, power consumed by the load whatever load or resistive or whatever inductive or whatever load you have over here when you want to find what is the power that is consumed uh you you will be connecting this in this fashion this is your uh, fixed coils uh, fixed coils and this is your moving coil and these two coils are known as your uh, current coils the fixed coils are also known as current coils and this is known as your pressure coil pressure coil and you you will get the uh, deflection in terms of uh, power uh, or watts basically the reason behind uh, this uh, uh, naming of these coils is that uh, the entire current flows through this coil so the for whatever the load requirement is the entire current i flows through this coil and therefore we call this current coil basically what it do, does is that it will measure the current that is flowing through this coil let's call it i1 and let's say this is the coil uh, which is connected in parallel so there is a current that is again passing through this coil but this current is dependent upon the voltage across it right so uh, whatever voltage drop you have across the load depending upon that 
uh, the meter uh, generally we design in such a way that there is not much uh, drop in this region uh, you can also see that uh, the uh, the current coils are uh, made with huge thickness that there is no resistive drop in this uh, current coils so that is how the meters are generally designed uh, and therefore uh, there won't be any drop over here and we can consider the voltage over here uh, to be almost similar to the voltage at these two points right and then the current that is flowing through this coil will correspond to the voltage that is across this uh, load so basically uh, whenever we give the uh, function uh, the deflecting torque is equal to i1 i2 uh, so the general uh, form for um, the deflecting torque is uh, i1 i2 cos phi uh, dm by d theta uh, which is the mutual inductance uh, change in mutual inductance per d theta so there is a uh, term called cos phi also when you come when you consider this instrument to be working in ac uh, with the ac source uh, you will have to consider this cos phi now what is cos phi cos phi is the phase angle difference between i1 and i2 so generally uh, the phase angle difference will be uh, zero uh, with between i1 and i2 and therefore this cos phi term will uh, tend to one so you will get the equation again as i1 i2 into dm by d theta so this is the uh, uh, formula that we already discussed uh, previously so uh, here this uh, i1 will correspond to the current through the uh, load and then i2 will correspond to the voltage by uh, the resistance the voltage by uh, the resistance r of the instrument or they you can uh, use it as z or r uh, depending upon the inductance of the coil so uh, this current is going to depend upon on the voltage and the uh, resistance and basically so what you are getting is the voltage into current that is the form that you are getting and therefore uh, this instrument can be used for uh, uh, as a watt meter uh, uh, with the same construction in this arrangement so that is the advantage of uh, advantages of the electrodynamometer type instrument so i think uh, it is clear uh, that we can use the instrument for as a, how we can use the instrument as a voltmeter a meter and a watt meter thus the construction doesn't change but uh, only the ch uh, the change is only visible in the um, in the connections how the connections are made the electrical connections now uh, we'll have a slight comparison between uh, the pmmc instrument that we have already discussed and uh, the electrodynamometer type instrument that we are currently discussing so uh, yeah so let's look at what are the uh, problems that are there uh, with these two instruments uh, and what are the advantages that are there so uh, firstly when we look at uh, a pmmz instrument we already discussed that uh, the uh, instrument uh, should have uh, the the deflecting torque is given by the expression uh, td is equal to i1 i2 cos phi into dm by d theta and cos phi is the angle between the phase angle between i1 and i2 so generally let's say uh, if you are taking the ammeter uh, if you are taking the voltmeter the current i1 and i2 are same so it just becomes that there is no phase difference between i1 and i2 because it's the same current that is flowing through i1 and i2 so for, so for uh, voltmeter it directly turns out uh, the electrodynamometer uh, type voltmeter it directly turns out that td is equal to i square dm by d theta because there is no uh, difference between i1 and i2 therefore the current is same and there is no difference in phase uh, angle and therefore you get it as direct i square by i square into dm by d theta but then when you look at uh, for a meter uh, one thing the design parameter that you have to keep in mind is that uh td is equal to i1 i2 cos phi 
into dm by d five d theta. So here we have to make sure that the L by R ratio. Uh, uh, so sorry, uh, the yeah L by R ratio. L by R ratio is nothing but but the time constant. Uh, we can also say the time uh, time required to reach uh, 0.63 times of the final value, which is known as the time constant. Uh, probably you might have learned it uh, in your 12th or maybe you will uh, even learn it in your uh, circuit analysis part uh, what is the time constant so it is the uh, time that is required uh, to reach uh, 0.6 of the final value of the current uh, uh, that is passing through this uh, arrangement so uh, the l by r l is what l is your inductance and r is your resistance so for both these uh, let's say for a meter you have the uh, the uh, moving coil and then you have a swamping resistance and then for uh, your fixed coil is there and you have a shunt resistance so if the value of L by R in this circuit and the L by R in this circuit is different, then there will be change in phase angle. I mean, there will be change in the phase. Uh, there will be a, uh, the no longer the phi will be equal to zero. I1 and I2 will have uh, different phases. So that is uh, not desirable because it won't give a proper uh, work proper uh, result so uh, what we uh, do is that we make sure that the l by r ratio uh, is same let's say let's call this uh, l1 r1 and let's call the combined inductance as l2 and this is r2 so l1 r1 by l2 r2 the ratio of the uh, inductance and resistance of both these circuits should always be equal that is one of the design parameters that you have to uh, keep in mind uh, because uh, one reason is that the current uh, formation uh, or the uh, response you can say of the system should be same because both these are can be considered as two different systems and then uh, the response or the time taken to respond or to reach 0.63 times the final value in both these uh, circuits should be the same so uh, that is one thing that we have to keep in mind while uh, the construction for this device now we look at what are the differences uh, we were looking at we were about to look at what are the differences between uh, the moving coil uh, permanent magnet moving coil instrument and the electrodynamometer type instrument so the first major difference is that um, in PMMC uh, we know that it is it can be used for only for DC currents uh, and uh, electrodynamometer type instrument sorry uh, electro dynamometer type instrument can be used for both uh, sorry guys mm, this uh, this instrument can be used for both ac as well as dc uh, this can only be used for uh, dc type of instrument and uh, dc type of measurements this can be used for ac as well as for dc uh, the reason why uh, we can use this electrodynamometer type instrument for both is that uh, DC means uh, for DC the frequency is very high uh, or you can say uh, the frequent I mean the current is constant or the voltage is constant therefore uh, uh, it produces the deflection uh, for uh, DC also uh, so Mm. we generally say that DC has infinite frequency uh, the frequency of DC is infinite because every second uh, every microsecond or millisecond is the time period in which uh, the DC reproduces the same value so when you uh, divide it with uh, frequencies one by time period which makes it infinite uh, 
so uh, now one limitation of uh, electrodynamometer type instrument is that uh, when we say that it can be used for AC the problem is that uh, let's say the current uh, keeps on changing in this uh, instrument so uh, current keeps on changing means uh, let's say if you are using for AC the current is a sine sort and the value of current uh, comes to zero every now and then right but then uh, this instrument uh, let's say if the frequency is very low let's say if the frequency is maybe 1 hertz or let's say in point 1 hertz so if the frequency is point 0.1 hertz that means that uh, the time period would be 10 seconds uh, for the sinusoid right so in 10 seconds it will go to maximum then come back to zero then go to uh, minimum then come back to zero so what happens is that the instrument uh, would move this uh, towards uh, the maximum value and then it would uh, reverse and then again go to the maximum value uh, maximum current and that is there uh, and then come back to the minimum value if the time period is too high so uh, one aspect is that even if the current direction reverses the current direction will reverse in all the three coils and therefore uh, there is no case that it comes towards this direction since the current direction changes in all the three coils the deflection will still be in the same direction uh, for uh, electrodynamometer type instrument the only problem is that if the frequency is very low in the range of like uh, 0.1 hertz there will be very high oscillations so this is one major issue with electrodynamometer type instrument if the frequency is very low uh, then there is uh, very high oscillations but then uh, it is well suited for uh, frequencies in the range of 40 hertz and above so for 40 hertz and above we can easily use this instrument uh, for very low frequencies uh, we can use the instrument with a very high uh, damping ratios uh, I mean very high damping values uh, or dampers but then uh, the accuracy of the in, uh, instrument will also change with uh, such high damping values uh, or such high dampers so basically damper is a uh, something that is used for uh, uh, reducing the oscillations or stopping the oscillations so we'll be looking at what is damping and what are the types of uh, which are which are the means in which uh, we are uh, using these dampers in the coming classes so uh, that is one major issue with electrodynamometer type instrument so so generally uh, if we are looking at ac that we get in our homes uh, which is 50 hertz signal uh, this is well suited for such uh, measurements i mean there is no problem uh, in measuring such instrument uh, such uh, frequencies now uh, in pmmc uh, you are you won't be able to use it for ac measurements because the permanent magnet uh, field doesn't change with the change in the current so what happens is that the uh, if you look at if you take it for ac measurements uh, let uh, the problem is that it will oscillate to both the directions uh, the moving coil uh, will oscillate to both the directions because the uh, the fixed uh, fixed coil there is no fixed coil in PMMC instead there is permanent magnets uh, in which the direction of the magnetic field never changes only the direction of the magnetic field in the moving coil changes because of which it will move to both the directions and it is a meter that gives the average value of the uh, uh, average value of uh, whatever is being measured so let's say if you give ac with high frequency uh, let's say in the range of 50 hertz uh, high frequency it will what it will show is it will uh, just stay at zero itself because zero will be the average value of the sinusoid so if you take the positive half and the negative half and add it you will get it as zero so that is a problem with uh, PMMC instrument whereas in the case of electrodynamometer type instrument we have already seen uh, that uh, the theta is uh, equal to i square by k uh, dm by d theta uh, after neglecting the cos phi term uh, for voltmeters uh, so for if it is ammeter then it is i1 i2 by k so basically what happens is that uh, here uh, it is uh, the, the deflection is 
uh, proportional to the square of the current which means that uh, it calculates the root mean square value um, rms value is what is being measured in uh, electrodynamometer type instrument but here in pmmc instrument it is basically the average value that is being calculated uh, in electrodynamometer type instrument theta is equal to uh, b a n divided by k into i so theta sorry uh, so b a n into k div uh, divided by k into i uh, which makes it that the theta is proportional to i over here and then the theta is proportional to i square in electrodynamometer type instrument the so theta proportional to i in this type of instrument uh, and for electrodynamometer type instrument it is proportional to i square term so here uh, if you take the rms value uh, basically uh, even if you take it for dc measurements the rms value of a dc uh, measurement is same as the uh, uh, measure the value itself so it doesn't make any difference uh, in dc measurements as well so that is the major advantage over here for uh, using this electrodynamometer instrument the only th difference is that uh, let's say uh, the scale will not be linear for pmmc instrument the scale will be linear but for electrodynamometer type instrument the scale will not be linear in a scale in the sense uh, let's say you have a scale uh, on the instrument um, and let's say this is your zero uh, then you have one and then you have two uh, this will be the way in which you will have for uh, PMMC instrument at, but at the same time let's say for uh, for electrodynamometer type instrument the deflection is uh, deflection is equal to the square of the current so let's say this is zero so then after here you will have one but then uh, mm, 2 square is 4 so this will be where you will have your 2 this will be 1 uh, the deflection from here to here will be 1 but then from here to here will be 2 and then so on it goes because it, it is uh, corresponding to the square of the currents right the deflection is corresponding to the square of the currents so Hmm. Uh, the scale is non-linear the scale is non-linear in this case uh, for electrodynamometer but here it is linear uh, these are the major differences uh, that we have mm. so I think we, we had already discussed about this RMS value basically if you take all, all of these terms as a constant k then you have k into i square of t uh, which is the current and uh, this is uh, this is your basically your uh, if you take uh, theta uh, uh, as uh, by averaging time uh, uh, over this current then uh, what you have uh, is that it is basically i r m s square uh, if we, when we average it over time when the i square is averaged over time so that is the uh, measurement that you have because at high frequency basically what happens is that the theta is getting averaged over the time period uh, so i think uh, we have almost uh, discussed the uh, meters uh, in detail and therefore I think uh, we'll wind up at over here uh, for the session and then we'll look at the next topics like damping and uh, other phenomena uh, in the next class so okay then guys I hope uh, the video is clear uh, if you have any doubts uh, you can directly contact me and I'll I'll address your doubts. So, okay then guys.